One of these men is the world's champion racing car driver. What is your name, please? My name is Jack Prebham. My name is Jack Prebham. My name is Jack Brabham. Only one of these people is the real Jack Brabham. The other two are imposters. And we'll try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Kitty Carlisle, Donna Michi, and Polly Bergen. <laughs> On to Tell the Truth with your host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. Thank you, and good evening, and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Dristan, decongestant cough medicine. Stops coughing due to colds or bronchial irritation. Dristan, decongestant cough medicine. Panel, will you please open your envelopes and take out your affidavit cards and follow along as I read from this first affidavit. I, Jack Brabham, have been driving an international racing competition only since 1955. During that time, I have won the Grand Prix races of England, France, Holland, Monte Carlo, Portugal, and Belgium. For the past two years, I have held the title World Champion Racing Car Driver. Signed, Jack Brabham. My panel, you heard as did I when I read it. These three stalwart and capable-looking gentlemen, all claiming to be Jack Brabham, world's champion racing car driver. And let's begin this first round of questioning tonight with Tom Poston. Tom? Thank you, bud. I'll ask uh, uh, number one. Brabham, is that correct, sir? Brabham. Brabham. Can you tell me where Linwood King races his car? Linwood King? No, I'm afraid not. You don't know. Number two, could you tell me what is the nature of the fuel used for uh, uh, competition racing? Uh, in this case, it's aviation fuel, 130 octane. 130 octane. Number three, what is uh, previous to your uh, start in the uh, racing field, what was the nature of most fuel used for racing the high-powered cars? It was mainly alcohol fuels. Uh, thank you. Number one, what does a shaved head do for an engine in a racing car? It increases the flow of the gases through and uh, increases the performance. Thank you. Number two, could you tell me the nature of the tread on the tires of a racing car, high-speed racer? Well, it's a tread configuration that um, increases your traction on a corner. Thank you. Kitty. Number one, where is Monza? In Italy. In Italy? Yes. Number two, there is a Monza type race being held in France. Where is it held? Not in France that I know of. Do you know number three? Uh, you're not mixing that up with Le Mans, are you? No. Number one, do you know? I don't know. I don't think it's in France. Uh, number two, can you tell me, do you drive alone when you race? Always. Always. Number three, where is your uh, assistant, the man that helps you in case anything goes wrong? Uh, a mechanic, you mean? He's yeah. In the, pit. Mm -hmm. in the uh, pit area. In the pit area. Number one, where is Targa Florio? Uh, that's also in Italy. In Italy. Number, th uh, number two, when you have an accident, which... Mm -hmm heaven for offend, yes. uh, who comes to your assistant uh, first? Usually the person who's closest to the accident. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Don Amici, please. Uh, number three, why do uh, mm. European drivers not drive at Monza any longer? Mm. European drivers or British drivers? European. Well, European drivers do drive at Monza. Number one? There oh, is. Every year. Uh, number two, how many points per race in the, uh, in the uh, championship well, standings? For first place, eight points. And for number three, how many for second? Six. Uh, number one, uh, what is the name of the great Argentinian racer, now retired? Uh, Fangio. Jean Manuel Fangio. Uh, number two, uh, would you describe the course in Florida to me? Sebring. Yes. Yes, it's a 5.2 mile circuit. On what? What is it on? It's on abandoned airstrip and public roads. Uh, number three, uh, what is the name of the Spaniard that was killed in Italy about a, two years ago? De Portugal. Uh, number one, what is the difference between one liter and two liter motors? Uh, it's a question of size of the cylinders. What? And speed, how much? 
No, in the region of uh, eight to ten miles an hour, also possibly. in the region of Polly Bergen. Polly? <laughs> well, I don't know whether they're giving right answers or not, but I never saw three men answer so many questions. I No, I can only say either all three of them are drivers, which is possible because they cheat terribly on the show. <laughs> or they are three of the brainiest fellows I ever saw. They're coming up with answers like this. Now, if I only knew whether they were right or not, I'd be okay. <laughs> um, uh, number three, uh, when you're driving a racing car in Europe, um, wh wh which side of the car is the steerer on? The center. <laughs> the center of the motor car. They are single-seat racing cars. Uh, what year did Gordon Ord hold the international, the world's champion racing driving uh, thingamajiggy? 1955 and 1956. Well, it must have been before I was born. I've never heard of him. Number one, could you tell me? That's it's all we have time for. It wasn't 1955 or 6. I beg your pardon? It wasn't 55 or 6. All we have time for, I'm sorry to say. Because you didn't make it clear whether you meant just the regular thingamajiggy or the grand thingamajiggy, Polly. However, it's time for you to mark your ballots now. Will you do so, please? Without consultation, vote for number one, number two, or number three. And, of course, the team of challengers will receive the usual $250 for every incorrect vote. All set? Ballots all marked? All the way down the line? Tom, for whom did you vote? Well, in view of the fact that they answered so beautifully, this should be the way you vote. <laughs> <laughs> but I did vote for number, number three. Uh, I, I found some discrepancies in the answers of one and two. I, I always hate to say that, because then if you're wrong, y you're crazy. Right? <laughs> Okay, I just think it's number three. I think it's number three. <laughs> Kitty. I voted for number one. Uh, they all, I think they're all Jack Brabham. But uh, I think if they're not, one, one of them is, and the other two are his helpers, the, the fellow that got there the quickest. <laughs> I voted for number one. Thank you. And Don? Oh, this is a pure guess on my part. I voted for number two, and I'm beginning to think <laughs> I'm incorrect in voting this way because I, it seems to me that in the championships... Uh, it can't add up when if, if eight is the number of points given for, uh, for first place. I, I think it's too large, but I voted for number two anyway. Polly. Well, I voted the way, um... <laughs> <laughs> Tom did. Make a stand. Oh, Make a stand. Pick one, do but it. But I three. knew you'd, you'd be nasty about it, so <laughs> I voted for number one. I, I, I know absolutely nothing about racing car driving. But I must say that uh, they're phenomenal. Right or wrong, they're just phenomenal. All right, with that tribute in mind, we've had all our votes in, and uh, we will see whether that uh, tribute has paid its own uh, self off by making the panel right or wrong. And you check yourselves if you're playing at home with us, which we hope you are, as we discover which one of these gentlemen is the real world's champion racing driver. <laughs> Willa Real, Jack Brabham, <laughs> please stand up. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I must add my two cents worth to what Polly has said, too. Why I think this is so the many I don't this is the finest, one of the finest challenging panels we've ever had. It's all yeah. done by mirrors. Man. All done by mirrors. I don't believe it. Yeah, really sensational. Number one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? Yes, my name is Jerry Seymour, and at the moment I don't do anything because I'm an out-of-work radio commentator, a bleak stroke, uh, master of ceremonies, a bleak stroke in anything you like, really, but uh, they don't like my accent over here. <laughs> Number two, your real name and what you do, please. Uh, my name is Julian Apley, and I'm a writer at the Darcy Advertising Company. <laughs> <laughs> well, gentlemen, in checking the score, we find them a one, two, three incorrect vote at $250 each for a grand total of $750 from Dristan. And, of course, the gift package of all the fine products from the makers of Dristan. And we thank you so much for adding to our fun tonight. Hope you enjoyed it. Good night and good luck to you. <laughs> Now let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? 
My name is Judy Dell. My name is Judy Dell. My name is Judy Dell. Follow along once again, if you will, with your affidavit cards panel. I, Judy Delp, am a physical education major at Syracuse University. I won a scholarship for my baton twirling. I twirl between the halves of Syracuse football games. In competition, I have won more than 50 medals and 175 trophies for both single and double twirling. I am the 1960 National Baton Twirling Champion. Signed, Judy Delp. Three equally pretty and adept young misses, all claiming to be Judy Delp, National Baton Twirling Champion panel. May we start this round with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Thank you, bud. Um, number three, would you let me see your hand, please? Like this. Yeah, that's right. Number two. Number one. Where do you put your thumb, number three, when you do this? On the inside of the baton. And is that what makes it go right? Because I've tried it, and I can't seem to get it past my thumb. All the fingers are used, actually, and the wrist. But you try to get rid of your thumb first. <laughs> uh, number, what, is it, what does it mean here, number two? Single and double twirling. Well, single twirling is with one baton, double twirling is with two. At once. At once. Don Amici. Uh, number one, what resort near Syracuse features name bands? I have no idea. Number two, could you I have no that? idea. I beg your pardon? I have no idea. Number three? No, I don't know. Uh, number uh, uh, one, how long ago did Brown play with Syracuse? I think it was two years. How, two years ago? I think. Would you agree with that, number two? Yes. You I two? Was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> number, number two, who is Brown with now? Jimmy Brown, I don't know. He's pr with a pro. Uh, number three? I don't know. One? <laughs> Boy. Uh, number one, uh, what is the name of their great halfback at uh, present? Uh, Ernie Davis. Uh, number two, who broke their string of victories this year? Pittsburgh and Army. Uh, Polly? And Army. Number three, there, there is a very well-known baton twirler from Tennessee. I think she's from Knoxville, but I may not be right. From Tennessee, I know. Do you know her name? Been in a lot of competition. No, I don't think so. Number one, do you know? I think it's Claudette Riley. Number two? Sandy Wood. Um... Number three, uh, in baton twirling, uh, when you throw it up in the air, uh, how do you manage to catch it when it's coming down? Moving? I think you ought to take lessons, really, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> it would certainly help. There's no question about that. Tom, what about your lesson? A uh, question. My daughter does. Let, let me. Uh, I'll ask number two. Do you know Grover Dale, a baton twirler no, of I some don't. note? Okay. Number one. <laughs> What's the matter here? <laughs> What's going? On? Do you, number one. Uh, do you know the uh, Post March? Yes. Who I wrote it? I don't know. Huh? Do you know the whole name of it? The uh, Washington Post. Thank you. Num number two. Do you know who wrote that? <laughs> no, I don't. Do you know number two? How many? Bars, uh, how many bells are ringing, and that's all the time we have, but it is time to cast your ballots, if you will, please. So mark them, panel, without consultation. Well, and I vote for you. number one, number two, or number three. Everybody voted? All the way down the line. Okay, Tom, for whom this time? Who would you vote for? Number one. You think it's number one? Yeah. Well, I, I thought it was for a while until number two corrected her on the name of the famous uh, baton twirler from Tennessee. Now, knowing you, Polly, there may not really be any famous <laughs> baton twirler. <laughs> well, no, anyway. there is a famous baton twirler from Tennessee, but I don't remember her name. <laughs> well, I know I could count on you anyway. Number one is your vote. Kitty, yours. <laughs> well, I voted for number one. Number three has very long fingernails, and she couldn't have gotten rid of the fingernails and the thumb at the same time. <laughs> and number one looks, looks uh, uh, healthy enough to be a physical education major. Doc, I voted for uh, number two, and I uh, really wish I had an honest-to-goodness good reason for doing this, bud. But I, I haven't won. Just a hunch. Your, your vote, guess. Polly. <laughs> I'm sure it's number one, but number two, you see, I went, I felt the same way you did, she Kitty, about the fingernails, it. and number two had the shortest nails, uh -huh. and number one's nails were medium long, number three's were very long, and number two, 
I really, there is a very well-known, and she's going to be very hurt because I'm from Tennessee, but I don't remember her name, Baton Twirler from Tennessee. And I, I don't remember her name. I thought maybe I might recognize if, if one of them said it, but I didn't recognize either name. Polly, would you mind? Probably number three. Would you mind running through that again for us, please? I think we got it all. Anyway, the boats are in, such as they are. Let's see which one of these three ladies is the real baton twirling champion. So will the real Judy Delp please stand up? <laughs> I think I think nothing would be better than since uh, uh, Kitty needs a lesson in twirling that we should ask you to come out and give us a little demonstration of championship oh, right. twirling. The poetry in motion, wasn't oh, it? That's beautiful. Just My beautiful. daughter works hours to try to do that. She has no thumbs. That's all yeah. <laughs> Number two, would you tell us your real name and what you really do? My name is Linda Dillaway, and I'm a writer for Mark Magazine in Norwalk, Connecticut. <laughs> Never spoiled a baton in your life, huh? <laughs> and number three, your real name and what you do? Uh, my name is Carol Wanick. I'm an ice skater from New York City. Carol Wanick is being unduly uh, modest. She's not only an ice skater, she is former national women's figure skating champion. Number three, <laughs> Carol Wanick. <laughs> well, our score tells us that there were one, two incorrect votes at 250 each for a total of $500 from Dristan and, of course, the usual gift package of <laughs> fine products from the makers of Dristan. Thanks so much, and thank you for that beautiful exhibition. Good night and good luck. God bless you. Panel, let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Harold Arlen. My name is Harold Arlen. My name is Harold Arlen. Again, the affidavit cards, if you will, please, panel, and follow along. I, Harold Arlen, was the world's first full-time radio announcer. In the early 1920s, I worked for the first commercial radio station in existence. I announced the first broadcast of a professional baseball game and the first broadcast of a college football game. I was the first to introduce on radio such people as Babe Ruth, Will Rogers, Marshall Foch, and William Jennings Bryan. Signed, Harold Arlen. Three gentlemen who began working in a medium close to our hearts, which later became television. The first radio announcer they all claimed to be, Harold Arlen. So may we start this round with Polly Bergen. Polly? Thank you, bud. Number three, where is WLW? I believe it's in Cincinnati. And number one, do you agree with that? Yes. And number three, where is KXLA? I don't know. Number two, do you know? I don't know. Uh, number one... When uh, did the Green Hornets first go on radio? I couldn't tell you. Number two, could you tell me? Oh, about 1921. Uh, number three, uh, do you agree with number two on that? I don't know. You don't know. Number two, who was the, had the lead in the Green Hornet? That I don't recall. You don't remember. Number one, um, what a radio show has long been one of the top shows out of Nashville, Tennessee? I couldn't tell you. Number two, could you tell me? I couldn't say. Tom Poston. Uh, number three, could you tell me in, in announcer's parlance, what is a, a wow? I don't know. Do you know what it means, number three, to wow in? No. Number one, could you tell me uh, two kinds of microphones? Well, in the old times, in the, in the 20s? Well, I guess almost any two kinds. Well, in the old tomato can. 
<laughs> That's the really other one, going the other one was the, te uh, the old telephone instrument. Thank you. Number three, could you tell me who is Don Dunphy? I don't know him. Do you know who he is? No. Who is the great, number three, who is the great uh, racetrack uh, announcer? The announcer of the races, the great man from the, from the past. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank it you. is. Number one, what is Ma Marshall Foch's first name? Number two, can you tell me the sobriquet under which William Jennings Bryan was known? Under the monkey trial. No, his sobriquet, his sort of uh, oh. the, the nickname they gave no, him. No, I don't know. Uh, number three, what famous phrase did Will Rogers always start his uh, talks with? Uh, all I know is what I read in the newspaper, I believe. Uh, number one, it says you started here in 1920. Of course, it is so far uh, before my time. I hardly know what to ask. <laughs> <laughs> but when you first began, what station did you begin? Where, where did it say? It doesn't say where you started. Where did you start? East Pittsburgh. Oh, in Pittsburgh. Ah. Did it say Don, you number two, uh, uh, do you know the first name of, the, uh, of Amos and Andy, what they were originally called? No, I don't recall. Uh, number one, wh who was the first famous uh, network sports announcer? Uh, McNamee. Uh, number three, what is uh, Clem McCarthy famous for? I believe boxing, uh, announcing boxing. About. Number two, who announced Amos and Andy originally? Jay Reynolds. Sir. Number two, number... I guess that's it. It is time now to uh, mark your ballot, all of you young people <laughs> who weren't born when this gentleman was on the air, you understand. Uh, so please mark them and vote without consultation for number one, <laughs> number two, or number three. <laughs> Everybody set? No. Ready, set, go. Time is short, and here we go. Tom, for whom? Well, I, I thought for a while that it was number three. I don't know if you can see this. It's number one. I vote for number one because I, I couldn't seem to get any satisfactory answers out of number three about the things I, I knew something about, and number one did answer few of my questions. Kitty. I voted for number three purely on the timbre of his voice when he had said, my name is Harold Arlen. It had a kind of voice that I felt would be strong and resonant for radio. Okay, Don. I voted for number one. I, uh, uh, Clem McCarthy was famous for uh, uh, horse racing, of course, and uh, uh, Will Hayes was the name of the first uh, radio announcer for Amos and Andy, which two missed, I okay. thought, so I don't know. Polly. I wish I was dead. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a guess. We have much time. <laughs> Number two, she voted. For. <laughs> no real wall covered tonight. You just wish you were Whatever dead. I said, I'd be wrong. <laughs> All right, there we have it. Our minds at least pseudo made up. And our sobriquets on the line. Let's find out who's right, who's wrong, as we discover which one of these gentlemen is the first radio announcer. So will the real Harold Arlen please stand up? <laughs> you were right. Well done. Well done. Let's find out quickly about the other two gentlemen. Uh, number one, would you tell us your real name and uh, what you really do, please? My name is William Hewson, and I'm a wine consultant. Ooh. Thank you. Sir. And number two, your real name and what you do, please? My name is William Toohey. I'm from Troy, New York, and I'm and a funeral director. <laughs> Our panel. In case the name, in case, in case the name Tui sounds the least bit familiar to you, this is the father of our Jerry Tui, who works in the staff of our show. <laughs> so there you are. In checking up on the score, we find one, two, three incorrect votes at 250 each for a total of $750 for the second time tonight from Dristan and a gift package of fine products from the makers of Dristan. Thank you, gentlemen. It was fun. Good night and good luck. That's all the time we have for tonight, except we're going to have to say goodbye to Tom Poston for a few weeks. He goes out on the road in a brand new musical called Conquering Hero. And Tom, we not only, I and the panel, uh, they join me, I'm sure, in wishing you the greatest success in the world and a swift and successful trip back to Broadway where you belong and back with us where you belong, too. Thank you. Thank you. That's it, panel. So, good night to you all. Good night, good night, Bud. Good night, Bud. Good night, Bud. Bud Collier saying good night from Dristan and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody.
To Tell the Truth is a Mark Cook and Bill Codman production in association with CBS Television Network. has been brought to you by Bicidol Powder. To settle acid upset stomach and relieve acid indigestion. Johnny Olson saying goodnight from To Tell the Truth. This program was pre-recorded.